Yes, indeedy. Create those little all lang syne moments. Every moment that we live, every moment that we exist. And you never know when you're going to run into that old lover, you, you know, the one from the Chevy van that, you know, kind of got away after a while, man. But God, what a time you had. What a blessed place to be. In a way, you never left it, don't you see? That's the way we love, for real, in this life. You know, there ain't none of this, you know, jump in the sack and goodbye, Jack, uh-uh, and breaking Jill's heart again and again. No way, man. Even though that's the way it seems to have been, eh? I mean, in a lot of cases, and, you know, men could be so cruel, and then, you know, women got even. I mean, you know, what else could they do, you know? I mean, we all had it one way or another, and we had to deal with it somehow or another, and sometimes that was not too uh, kindly, eh? But babies, now we don't have to live that way. See, that was the way of pain. That was the way of suffering, the separation of howling at the moon in that pain because you could never get it back together again. Try as you would, except for, oh, maybe a moment or two. That that one was it. And the shivy van back there in 72, man, or was it 68? I don't know who can tell. It's always... You know, late, she's right on time. Oh my goodness, you never left that time, whatever it was, because that was quite divine. When the innocence, the happiness, and the orgasmic come together in your younger days, these are moments you never forget. It's like complete perfection, but you're such a child. You don't even know what it is. You're just in it, and then it's gone. You know, it lasts a while, and then it's gone. But you never forget. That person's a part of you, that Chevy van too, and everything else to go with it, man, you know. Me and Mrs. Jones, we got a thing going on. <laughs> oh, I tell you, baby, you know, let's hope she wasn't Mrs. Ooh, that could be big trouble sometimes. I had one friend of mine that was a bit of a caterwauler back in the day, you know, in the conservative western USA, not California, uh, you know, where you could, uh, well, you could, you know, get away with it if you were discreet and kind and shit like that, but this dude wasn't, he was blatant and silly and just thought he was the cat's meow, you know, well, one day he uh, was up there in this little town in Wyoming and he came walking out of somebody's house there at, you know, a late hour, you know, maybe two, three o'clock in the part of the day there when things are kind of dark and shadowy and stuff and you know it's a ways from break of day and you know he thought he'd just jump in his Cadillac and be on his way shots rang out in the middle of the night and you know I don't know how this guy lived to tell about it maybe they were just trying to scare him maybe they didn't really want to kill him I don't know but he rolled underneath his Cadillac real quick thank goodness the tailpipe was cold because it had been sitting for a while and, you know, somebody was kind enough not to blow the gas tank up on him. I know there was a thousand bullet holes in that automobile when daylight came. A thousand bullet holes. Now, that's some pretty intense fire. And nobody called the police, etc. I mean, if he could drive it, he I don't, know, don't even know how the story went, whether he could even drive it or not, or how he got out of there. But all I can tell you is he disappeared, and he disappeared fast, and he never went back to that town again. Because he got the message loud and clear. You know, the next time they ain't going to miss deer, you know. <laughs> Amazing they did this time. You know, it's the Wild West, see. So, you know... We all go with the flow. Some are just, you know, I mean, this is the distinction you find in just about every uh, category of life, you know. There's always those who are, you know, going to wallow in it and be too much, you know. And sooner or later, see, just like my buddy there in Wyoming, sooner or later, it's going to catch up to you one way or another, and you ain't going to be allowed to get away with it anymore, you see. Especially if you get all blatant and cocky about it, you know. I mean, it's one thing to be serviceable to another man's wife. I mean, you know, in a way, you're doing the dude a favor, but just don't let him find out, you see. And you damn sure don't go rubbing their nose in it, you know. And then bitch at somebody else for hugging up on your old lady. Who the hell do you think you are, Mr. 1,000 shots in 20 seconds flat? You're lucky, man. You're blessed. like Because, you know, creation decided to let you live to tell about it, man, you know. I mean... I'm the last to be critical of 
anybody for their indiscretions. I mean, God, we're all human. We all, you know, have our ways. And we all have our moments, too. And some of them are really cool. You know, like that time in the Chevy van, man. But see, what happens to some people? They have that moment somewhere along the way there in their younger day. Because everybody do some way or another. You at least get an indication of what the possibility be. You know, at least in your younger day, somewhere along the way, you know. Well, I mean, generally speaking, now, I'm, you know, we all have an individual path, but, you know, basically that happens to just about every human being that lives, you know. But what you do with it after that's all about what kind of person you are. See, it's just how you start to define yourself and then live the part you've defined yourself to be, you see. And if you're going to be a scalawag, you're going to go out and try and replicate that moment with every little skirt that will slow down uh, long enough for you to grab hold of her, you know what I mean, Jelly Bean, you know? And if you're the skirt, same way with the dude, man, you know, it's like, you know, it's uh, hard food, you know, it's like, gotta find it, gotta find it, gotta find it. And it's never there. I mean, parts, pieces, you know, once in a while you get real blessed and find somebody you can coagulate pretty well with. <laughs> but that's what it is. It's not exactly the expansive thing, you know. And it backfires on you again and again. Because where you may have some agreement in this one area that's so special and blessed, these other special and blessed areas are not so blessed in the special way they ought to be, you see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby, see. But, you know, some people, you know, they go with this flow that I call love, don't you know? And it makes you kind of, you know, you're not as indiscreet as your buddies who, you know, just happen to be a little less discreet than you are. And, you know, in fact, indiscretion is the word of the day. And, it, you know, back in the day, it was like, you know, three times a day with three different people or maybe a pile, who knows? You know, it was kind of crazy shit. And there you couldn't go. You know, you were pretty liberal. And, of course, you're out running around being a naturist and hanging out with all your hippie friends. You know, and there is free love. But there are these special beings. Oh, God. I mean, and there's usually just that one. And I'm telling you, man, it, 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 it drives a person, a lot of people, insane trying to get it back. Because it's not one you can hang on to. It's like the blessing of an angel who has wings and will fly away. She just came to share, or he, as the case may be, came to share with you in that way to let you know that, yeah, you're well appreciated and loved in this reality. Now you hang on to this because this is going to last you for the next 150 years, okay? <laughs> Sad as that may be. And that drives, like I say, that drives some people crazy. And that's when they go sleeping with lots of different people and they really get themselves in a bad way, you know, because that, that, it, it numbs you down. You have to be numb to live like that. So you get, you know, instead of getting more of what you're looking for, you get less and less. And pretty soon it's like, why bother, man, you know? A few years down the road, it's like, you know, and I mean, people do get to this point. I know it's unbelievable to you young horny ones, but let me tell you, the ones that have worn their horns for a while, they, they you know, you get acquainted with some real drama in your life and you learn that there's a price to pay for everything and you know that none of it is just sweethearted you know till the end of the day and away you go into the night in flight you know I mean yeah you have your moments thank goodness that's what gets us through but baby unless you're really 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 exceptional it don't last you know I mean it changes everybody does you know so people come and go in the flow of your world and there might be those that are steady and pure and loving as all get out. But you know what? There's some element there that you're not comfortable with. And you've been resisting and pushing and pulling back and jumping around with it and saying, what the hell, what the hell, what the hell? You know, instead of just relaxing and being straight up with yourself. See, this is where most of us fall down. It's difficult to be straight up with yourself. To admit what you're really feeling, in other words, to allow yourself to feel it and say, oh, shit, this one don't fit. And to go on from there, see, instead of trying to make a square peg fit in a round hole, etc., you know what I mean, jelly bean? You know, instead of thinking you got to have all the marbles, be happy with the few that you got, especially that ta. There's not one like it in the whole universe. I think that's the universe inside of that. It's a glass tot. It's about one inch, you know, round. And it's got glittery, gold, glowy everything in it. It's like, you know, 
uh, the whole universe inside of a little one-inch crystal sphere. Now quit your bitching and go play marbles with people that are impressed with that little Tom, man, you know. And don't play with the cheaters anymore, you know, because cheaters never win, yourself included, right? <laughs> Oh my God, we're getting back to base morality. What in the hell's wrong with me, man? Oh shit, set me free. It's Friday, please, man. Well, I'm just saying appreciate it while it's there, man, because that's going to last you for the rest of forever, you know? And if another moment comes that builds on that, bless that too, man, and, and, and latch on to that. And stay there in it, man. You know, you can live here now and be there in that, because that's the love that lasts forever, see? That's a revelation. When you get to feel like that, when you get to deal like that, when you get to emerge like that, and you know, only those that have been there know what I'm talking about. The rest of you, it's just conjecture. All you know is what you see in the movies, and that's perfect, of course, you know. But it only lasts about 35, 40 seconds, because shit, these big time actors and actresses get naked. It goes up to a million bucks a minute to shoot, you know. And anyway, it's very expensive, so. They don't allow them to do too much. Besides that, the crews get all carried away and they don't want it to devolve. Well, then again, they do, man. So what the hell? <laughs> it's the movie business. Well, babies, that's the movie business in a bigger way in the life that we're living. We have allowed ourselves to go completely insane and crazy. I mean, our insanity is on display now publicly on both coasts here in the U.S. and all across this earth and a lot of cap towel places, et cetera, you know. But, man, you can't beat L.A. for, you know, the shallow tinniness of not giving a shit, the empty greed of going for everything. That's the guys, that, you know, and girls that go out and do it all the time and just never have anything going looking for everything. And Well, some have fun with it, but most know, you know. Uh, it's just, it just gets heartless. Meaningless. You go numb inside, and you know it's hard to recover. It's hard to come back from that. You know. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the ranch there in D.C., you got all these clowns as the system is breaking down. They're just trying to gobble up all the pieces they can, and all these fat little hogs have been taking in billions and trillions, and you know all these secret powers and rituals and shit. And it's just coming apart at the seams, man. You know, it's like it's so decadent. It makes decadence look good. <laughs> I mean, it's so extreme, it's gone beyond anything known of as an extreme. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? It's trying to be some kind of, like, Hitlerian existence, you know? It's like, well, baby, you know, uh, but, 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 a, but a big pig Hitlerian existence, one that just sucks the marrow out of everybody, it doesn't leave a thing. Maybe a little shell to kick around a little bit, you know, but that's about it. They take everything else, you know? But see... But take, 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 and slam, 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 and get arrogant. They got away with 911. They got away with Kennedy before that. It's, and, and not to mention Wacko and then Oklahoma City, etc. I mean, you know, there's been a hundred demonstrations of how awful these beans can be. And nobody to nail their ass to the wall. So they got kind of cocky. They got kind of fat. And they just started grabbing, you know, gazillions and taking everything. You know, I mean, when, you know, Bush Jr. went out and Obama came in and the bank thing only got worse, not better. And he just, you know, gave them all the money they wanted. Jeez, oh, you know that we were sold down the river. But good, it didn't matter who was in that office, you know. And even now, you know, it's a charade. They're trying to play on us to keep us distracted, you know. So you guys back there in D.C. marching for what's right today, the water protectors, babies, you know, demand free energy right along with, you know, the cessation of pipelines. You know, we gotta have something to replace all this free energy, right? All this costly energy, all this rapine of Mother Earth. We gotta get in a place where, you know, her love for us is so great that she provides all the power we need, you know. And it's not driving a technological reality anymore. It's an ethereal, energetic charged reality living in a material skin like we do here within see that only it's another level it's a little higher level of it it's being conscious of the energy that brings life that is life and that's way beyond electricity don't you see even though it looks like electricity to those that live here it's something a little beyond that it's the expansive energy of glow 
G-L-O-W, which is flow also. As you flow, you glow, and you glow when you're in the flow, see? And that glow is creation that we live in. See, that's our glow. Like the sun, the sun is creation. Sun and the earth together are creation, you know? And together they work it out perfectly, you know? But see, in this upside-down world, the sun and the mother are divided. Now, in the, the right-side-up world, the, the sun and the mother are undivided. That light of the sun lives in everyone and everything, the trees, the flowers, the birds, the bees, you and I, and everything else you see. You see it all glows. That's our reality. See, we've been living in what you call a shadow world, like somebody shut the light off, you know. Well, that's our little nightmarish existence, man, you know. The other side of 3D. <laughs> but there are those bright little moments that enlighten the darkness so tremendously. Sometimes in shady and shadowy ways, like the old shivy van days, you betcha. But baby, don't knock it until you've been there and seen that, done that. And hold it preciously in your heart right to this moment in time. Never let them go. Always love those who have loved you, especially those that loved you just right. You know, because that don't happen very often in this reality. Mostly it's a bumpy ride for everybody. <laughs> in a lot of different ways, yeah, metaphorically and otherwise. But really, man, it's, it's, it's hardly worthy of the effort we get it. Yet we can't stop. And we will torment ourselves shyness chasing a little bit of love sometimes man I tell you, just a little bit not realizing how much we already got inside and how all we got to do is flip that switch you know turn on the heart and we don't got to chase love and love don't got to chase us we just be love and love is us and there's lots of it in our life and whatever it is we're living that's exactly where we need to be given right now we're damn happy about it you see when you live in love, it sets you free. That's the message of Free Day Friday. Every Friday here at Spring Creek, the headwaters are alive. The very source of your love inside. Yes, indeed. The very source of your conscious presence. On this magic little ride we call 3D, baby. <laughs> oh, man, I miss the days, though. I really do, man. And the shivy van and the bell bottoms and all of that. It was so much fun to be on the run like that as a, a young person, you know, man, if I knew then what I knew now, oh, holy shit, we would have lived it so much richer, but then I don't know, we might have overdone it and burned out quick, you know, like a shooting star. So maybe you just got to bless what's been and be here now, because this is good enough, ain't it? And gosh, all I can do is get better. Love you. Hey, here's Eric Clapton. Man. We haven't heard from him for a day or two now, have we? Lazy, lazy stoner, man. Hiding out in the green room. Well, let's see what you can do now, man. 